Let's hope this works. I don't know, guys. Let's hope. We'll cross our fingers. And I'm going to go back to finishing my invisible stitching, my zigzag stitching, and give you time to try to find me again. And I totally lost the internet. So who knows what that's about? All right, let me pull you down here so I can show you my invisible stitching. There, Kathleen, this is the new one. Good job. Okay, so I'm going back to do, while everybody's coming in, Miss Kathleen, Laura found us again. Yay. I'm just going to try to finish up this zigzagging with the invisible stitches. Okay, let's see. I rethreaded. Mark had to start my computer again, check the internet. It said that my internet was totally off, so I have no idea what that was about. But, um, okay, let's see. All right, I think I'm about done with this part. And I'm going to go, let me see if I can get my camera in a good position. Wasn't that strange? Not your TV. Wow. Well, yeah, I was telling them I lost my whole internet. And uh, so thank goodness I've learned if it acts up, tell you right away so that you don't just sit there and I disappear. So who knows what that was about. But now the internet is back on. And... Uh, Okay, and I'm so tickled. Deborah Darnell commented on one of, oops, okay, let me show you this. I was talking to you about the, the Monopoly. This is why it broke. Right here, I wish you could see it, but it's gotten twisted around this little thread path. See, right there. So it it stays loose a lot. It's so fly away. And, whoops, now I just twisted it. Sorry, I was talking right into the microphone. Sorry. All right, I'm pulling it taut, hoping I can start stitching before it tries to loop itself again. All right. So now, let me see. I'm going to... Try to loosen this so I can tilt it down to have you be able to watch me. Okay. Okay. Whoops. Well, I'm not sure that's what I wanted it to do. Let me see. She's okay. Um, yeah, she well, she commented on one of the videos, so I was thrilled to hear from her. All right, so now I have to <laughs> now I have to thread this again. Hold on. I think this is going to look at this. This is going to be the night of gremlins. I am sure of it. The night of gremlins, and I guess it has to happen at some point, huh? All right, let me thread my needle again real quickly. This is why I had most of it done before I came on, because it is tricky. But I do want to make sure that you know going in that it might give you a fit, because then that way, put a good book on tape or put a good CD on, some good calming music, give yourself Plenty of time to try to work through the hiccups. And, um, all right, let's see. Okay, what? <laughs> oh, gee. Okay, let's see. Can I do it this way? Oh, and hopefully I'm still plugged in. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay, this this is not supposed to be funny, but uh, Mark says, you know, Deb, I, this 
this whole camera setup is not meant to do what you're trying to get it to do. But anyway, let me just show real quick. So I've gotten it threaded. I've got the needle threaded. And I'm just going to do the last little bit of zigzag here. I'm going to cut the thread loose. And I want to show, be able to show you. Hold on. I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> Poor little camera's tired. I don't. I want to make sure I don't turn it off. <laughs> Yay, Polly found us. Okay, now I'm going to show you as I do this stitching. But just, I'm trying to hold the camera and do the stitching. See, you can see we spend big bucks on our technology here. <laughs> All right, so here we go. And I just make sure that the fabric lays smooth. Whoops. Okay. Make sure that the fabric lays smooth. And I just gently move it with the curves. Gently. Try, you know, I press it good before I get ready to stitch it down. All right, now I'm going to go back one more time. But this is just to show you. Take it slow and easy. And, okay, here we go. This is the last piece that I have to stitch down. Try to keep it mostly on the main fabric that you're stitching down, just letting it dip off the other side just a tiny bit. All right, now I'm going to set my camera back up here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. I've loosened something wrong. Okay, whoops. <laughs> This is too funny. Okay. Now, let me get this into position and tighten it. We just got through spending some time down here because I told Mark, I said, we need some time to play with this and try to get it right. Well, not quite enough. Ugh, okay. Okay. I think I got it. Yay. Because I'm not good with this mechanical stuff. If I don't have to be, I'd rather do the fun art stuff. All right. I'm going to cut my thread. And that gives you some hints. I've given you a hint to if you, because it's real hard to see what you're sewing because it's invisible thread. So I've said, okay. Make sure that you that sometimes you can check, keep a little flashlight and check because there is a tiny little glint that will come off the stitches. Or you can just put your fingers gently along the thread path to feel if the thread is moving. And just stop every once in a while and check because nothing's worse than going all over it saying, man, I'm doing great today and find out nothing has been stitched because the thread broke. A while ago. All right. I'm going to show you this and then we'll talk about all the little things and what's next. Because I did work on this a few hours today. And I think I really did do some improvements and finished all of the color blocking. Then let me show you where I've done. See the stitching? Now, this is not the back of the quilt. This is just the foundation. I'll then put batting and backing and do quilting when I'm all done with the thread painting. But I just wanted to show you that, yes, I have done a lot of stitching on the back. And I'm not too worried if I get little tucks or anything like that. That's just, that's natural and it's not going to show. It's going to be hidden. So as long as the front looks good, that's all you have to worry about. Okay, and it's good to take pictures of it, to hang it up and go look at it. 
a lot of times I'll use a, a quilt I already have hanging and, and pin the new one to it. And so I can step back and look and I don't have to clean off a design wall or anything. So, all right, I'm going to get you ready to help to look at this so I can point out a few things I've done because I'm really tickled when I, when it comes time from when I read back and look at the comments made, you're asking wonderful questions and you're doing a very good job of internalizing. How do I do this? What should I do? What would look good? And I like answering your questions. So, cause I want you, when I'm not around, I want you to be able to look back at this live stream. Remember they're always there and you can look back and get answers to something you're dealing with. Um, but I also maybe would like it if, if you heard me and went, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And then you'll just know and you won't have to do any further research. Also, I'm not the last word on this. I just show you what works for me. There are some really good YouTube videos out there. And I love for you to go hunting and looking for other techniques or other styles. Go for it. The world's full of information, and I want you to have the best and the latest and the most. All right, so here we go. I did, I did a little bit of, um, I did a little bit of confetti quilting right here on the tree. This dark one and this light one are all confetti pieces. I added a few branches because I'm going to hang a swing on this. I always try to hang a swing on my landscape quilts if I can. But I put down, I used the Bow Nash fusible powder that because I had it on hand and it was inexpensive compared to some. But anyway, I and I used a, a pressing cloth. So I, I did the confetti on the tree, added extra branches. Then I really worked with this mountain. It was bothering me. And so I found my favorite mountain view, which is this one. Because see, I've got lots of pictures I use from. This is a, a, a bits and pieces of different mountains. But the favorite mountain that I liked working with was this one. And so what I did is I was studying that snow. Before, it just looked too pat. It didn't seem to have enough rhyme or reason to why I had the snow like I had it. And, oh, yes, you sure may. Any, Marsha, any way that you can, you can put a sleeve on it to hang it, whatever, what, or unless it already has one, but please do. It's, it's good to be able to hang it up and show it off. But this is the snow that I did from the mountain. And what I was noticing is how shadowed areas, recessed areas, were done in darker shades of blue. And I had that dyed fabric that I made. Here is some of it. This is the, a pale dyed that I did. But I have one that's also that's darker than that. And so I started using that. Some of this is a batik that I use to give the shadowing. So what I did is I just tried to look at this mountain and tried to notice where it has bright white where it has a gray, where it has a blue, I mean, a blue gray, and where it has um, some actual shades of blue to show the shadows. So I think that my mountain looks better. And then what looks confusing now is, is like this, it, it's hard to tell that these are two different fabrics now because this one has so much white on it. So when I start my thread painting, I'm going to make sure you know this is a different mountain and it's not nearly as tall, so it doesn't have all the snow on it. So, but anyway, I, I picked the picture I like best for the snow and worked on that. Then I looked at some of these others, making sure that, you know, I had my sense of depth. 
by changing fabrics, by going lighter in the back to darker, more vivid in the front, making sure I had that. Then looking again, this one I pulled in and this one I pulled in the two hills. Looking at that again and seeing where could I add some more realism, kind of layering, taking a step up from just doing the um, block color blocking. Here is a good one because it shows the two that, like, that you're in a valley, like see here. And then looking again at the water. And I really loved Linda's help. I think it was Linda that gave me the help. Yes, it was Linda that gave me the help on the water last time. And then going back in here and seeing how that the plants, as they stagger back, really help give you a sense of depth. And that's what you have to have to have a successful landscape. On this one, remember who's... Um, Whose landscape, they did a really good job of cutting the fabric or having the fabric, cutting and piecing it so that it showed definition in the elevation of the hill. And I wanted to make sure to show that. So, oh, and Deborah Dunnell is here. Oh, sweetie. Okay, you be so careful, darling. We're so tickled to see you. We're so tickled. Oh, from Nevin is from Istanbul. Okay, hi. And so, nice to see you. All right, so, um, let's see. Um, let's see. And Okay, that's going to follow flowers. So, is there something... All right, so I'll need most of these later. So what I'm trying to show, I'll show you what I've done so far. I think Nevin's fine, so we're really happy. Okay. What this is, I've gone in and continued to play with the little lake. I first had it too light. Then I tried to make it too dark. I love what Linda told me about having a darker edge in the shoreline. Then I took a little bit of tool, which is a form of netting. Let me see. I had it here a moment ago. Let me see if I can hear it is. This netting, and I bunched it up and used it at the base of the waterfall. Okay, I bunched it and I stitched it and then I glued it. And I think that that really helps this look better. I think it gives it a little more realism. Whoops, there we go. Then I took and put a little edge over here to the creek coming down, and then I added another little tree line. See this? And I think this gives a little more definition. I think I didn't quite have enough of the tree line coming across, because what I wanted to do is to make sure See how the lake looks set in now? It doesn't look like it's floating. And that's what I wanted. That was my big goal. So I have put a few more trees and shrubs and things in front to set, set the idea that these are undulating hills and tree lines, all of that, all the way up. I changed the curvature of this piece here. Then I added some pieces down in my corners. What I found in looking at some of these examples is that the edges looked darker. So here, the edges look darker. Here, the edges. But if you'll notice, there's kind of a darkness in the front corners. So I said, Good thinking. I will do that because I didn't know, you know, do I keep something all the way across? So let me see. So I did. Yeah, I put in some more interest here. I had to add more. It was too plain and I just had to add more. And then on the dark colors, I came in with a smoky thread 
and did the dark colors. The light colors, I came in with the clear invisible, but I added some branches to the trees, and I haven't touched the cabin yet. I'm going to bring out the cabin with thread painting and ink tints or any kind of, you know, fabric paint or pencil or whatever. So, but anyway, I think I, I kind of worked on this edge here, trying to give it a little more shape. In fact, I even brought this part down and over a little bit, trying to kind of blend it all together. Right now, this is too stark, but don't worry, because remember, we're going to come in here and we're going to have such fun putting all kinds of confetti and then doing all kinds of hand embroidered feather, uh, flowers. So this is, this is just the base and then we'll come in and work on it. So what I'm gonna be doing next, what do we have next to do? Now that I've, let me get this up so it doesn't keep falling over. All right. What I'm gonna be doing this week is gathering. Let me bring this up. Okay, I'm gonna be gathering interesting embellishments. I'm gonna be gathering some interesting yarns. And there, I've got eyelash yarns, all kinds of, I've even got some kind of, some all kinds of little interesting things. Whether I use it, I, I don't know right now. But here's some green lame. But I'm going to have it here. I do want to make it a little bit more realistic. So I'm not going to do like a hobbit land. I want it to be more realistic. But I'm going to do some thread painting. Give some definition to some of this. Start doing my stems of the flowers that are going to come up. Little patches of grass that kind of stuff. So, um, I may try to get some more tool and kind of fade out some things so I can have a little bit more depth perception. But first, pardon me, the thread sticking to me. Okay, the first thing is we've done the color blocking. Then we've stitched the color blocking down. The next thing we're going to do is do our thread painting. In the thread painting, we're going to do things like define it. So I will do take some good weight dark thread, and I will do some outlining of things. It's not that you're trying to make a cartoon, but you have to have you have to make them pop, okay? Because it, normally in real life, shadowing makes things pop. Well, this is a two dimension. We don't have the shadowing. We've got to add shadowing. So like to make the tree not just look like you glued it on, we're going to have to add shadowing. And I'm going to do that with my thread painting. So this week, I want you to gather up your unusual yarns and unusual threads and all your colors that you think you might use and have those ready because next week I'll have a lot of my thread painting done and show you exactly how I did it and what I did. Because like right now, this is kind of boring. So I've got to figure out how to give it interest and still have it look like it's far away. And that's what I'm going to be working on. And so next week, it's going to be thread painting. And then we'll start with whatever form of fabric painting. You can use crayons. If you don't have ink tents, you don't have to go buy them. Use crayons. Use regular colored pencils. And because this is not a quilt that's going to be used and washed, this is something that's going to hang on your wall. So whatever you've got handy, markers are tricky because they really get bold. So I would maybe a thin black marker 
for your outlines, but or dark brown marker. But um, I would say crayons, if you don't have ink tents or something, I would say crayons or regular colored pencils that you might have. And, um, but we're going to, you see, I've added some contrast. It needed some contrast. So we're going to keep working with that. We're going to keep working with how can we differentiate and put in, like with my thread painting, I will make some little trenches and stuff. Because remember that one that I showed you, the land kind of undulated, kind of rolled. Well, now is when we can put those trenches in with thread painting and with ink tents. And then that way, when we put our meadow flowers in front, it'll be there, but it'll look realistic because it's partially hidden by what you've put in front. So anyway, I think it's coming along. The very last thing we do, the very last thing we will do is find a backing for it, make it the same, actually make it a couple inches all the way around bigger than you, this here, along with your batting. If you want a landscape that has a puffy, more three-dimensional look, use polyester. You can even use two layers if you want to get a tropanto look. If you'd like a flatter, more um, washed, lived-in look, old-fashioned look, then go with your cotton batting and um, like a warm and natural or something. And it's entirely up to you. And we'll need to have, you'll either, I, I pen-based, because this, I'm going to actually do the quilting of this on the machine so I can do it with you. And so I pin based with big safety pins that then I can take out as I get to that area. But the quilting will be the last, last, well, next to the last. Because then I finish all of my landscapes with a knife edge frame look. And I will show you how I do that. You know, I do a, a smaller inner border that looks like mat board. Because I want these, these are paintings. These are fabric paintings. So I like them to have a, a very professional finish. You can finish any way you want. I'm just showing you the way I like to do best. All right. So I've gotten all this stitched down. Then we'll get ready. Next time I'll have a lot of thread painting done and I'll save areas just like I did today and show you how I actually do it. And you can drop your feed dogs or not, but gather up all different color threads. And you have to almost go white. Like if you wanted a yellow, you have to almost go white. If you have a green, I would go from almost black to almost white because you never know where you're going to want to highlight and where you are going to gonna, are going to want to go shadow. And I want a lot of clumps of grass. Uh, I want some swaying grains. Like, you know, one of the things I thought is this kind of looked like a wheat field. So that's where I'm going to get probably, I'm going to use one of my vari variegated threads and kind of maybe do some wheat stock looks. And between the basic colors I laid down and then if I put the, the thread painting, and you don't have to do that much. That's one thing I want to show you. You don't have to do it heavily because it actually looks better if it's not too heavy. And so we'll be doing that. We may be doing, we'll probably be doing our thread painting for at least next week. Then we will do probably two weeks worth of hand embroidery because I want us to really have fun with that. And we might want to do some couching with, with yarns or hand sew. And, and we're just going to find any fun little way to make it look like flowers. We'll be doing some more confetti work because, oh, yes, we're going, oh, you're so cute, Alexis. Oh, you traveled lately. Yes, we're going to be doing hand embroidery and we're just going to figure out how to do it. So, um, okay. Now, let's go look at a few 
of your art quilt treasures that you've shared with me. And please feel free to share. One of you asked, I wish I could see some other people's works to kind of get an idea of what they're doing. So I love seeing what you're doing. And I shared some with her and she was very appreciative. It just helps to see how is somebody else handling this? Hmm, how is this person handling that? And because I try to answer your questions, but it's always good to see what your neighbors are doing too. All right, let's look at some pictures then. All right, let me turn off this light. But we're going to move right along now. Um, as I told you, you know, doing the color blocking, um, getting all of the basics right is a little tricky, but we're going to have some fun. All right, let's go to photos. All right, don't forget, Mancuso's having their Greenville quilt show end of April. If you want to sign up, there are some ladies teaching art quilting. And it's wonderful, so just be ready. All right, you may want to try. They're going to, and if you don't want to spend for a whole class, they're having some lectures, and you might, for $20, you might be able to learn a lot from a lecture. All right, got the camera set up. Hopefully, you can still see me. And all right, let's see. Pictures. All right, here we go. All right, let's see. What did Miss B? She is our art quilter extraordinaire. And I want you to look again at her beach scene. I think it is just beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And I love the way by using the fabric, she showed the shimmer of the moon. So that's Excellent. Way to go, Miss B. Now, let's see what else. I'm not sure she has any other art quilts. These, she makes these bags to hold wheat or rice to use, put in your microwave and to use as warmers, neck for your sore back or sore neck. So she's a very talented lady, besides being such an amazing landscape artist. Miss Betty, let's see what she's got again. I love her lion. Very happy lion. And I love the 3D ear effect. That is so cool. I, I am a big, huge fan of anything that comes towards you off your canvas. And here we go right here with hers. And she's already added some Angelina fibers and... In fact, this looks like fibers, like a cheesecloth or netting as the snow. And I love that she added a third mountain. And she, this, she was the one that did, Betty, that cut the fabrics in different ways to give it that undulating look. It gives a sense of depth. So remember to do that because I didn't think of doing that. But by taking and cutting this directional fabric, it gives it the look of depth. So way to go. Then here is her wolf picture. I love him. I'm going to have to ask her how she did those leaves. I love that he's peeking out from behind the leaves. Way to go. Way to go, Miss Fatty. All right. Let's see. Who else is doing art quilts? I don't think... Oh, well, I can, you know what? I forgot to take a new picture. Okay, but I'll go ahead and tell you because if you're here for art quilts, you'd be interested in this because it's a collage quilt just like our art quilts are. I was working on this because I took a class at the Mid-Atlantic online at the Mid-Atlantic quilt show they had just two weeks, two weeks ago. And I was working with complementary colors, which were purple and yellow, but this just didn't look right. So I talked to the teacher. I came down and found fabrics that bridge the gap between purple and yellow. These I call bridge fabrics because they will help you connect two very different colors and kind of soften and fill in and give it a, a, just a much prettier look. 
And when you do these, you don't have to just follow their shapes. If you want to break it up into more different shapes to get a subtle color, you go ahead and do that. So my, my cow started coming along and I, I have done more. I wish I had taken a picture of it. Well, you know what? I might have it down here with me. I think I do. So I'll show you that when we finish looking at pictures. Oops. This is little Miss Maisie. She's doing very well blending in here. We're so happy to have her. Are there any more art quilt? Oh, I'll show you something my daughter does. My oldest daughter does henna painting on her hands, and it is just beautiful. And that's when she first puts it on, and then this is what it looks like after it ages. And it's just really, really pretty. So I told her one day, when we can start getting back together, I want to have her do henna painting. And I believe that came from an Indian tradition, um, India, in Indian. It came from that tradition where a new bride didn't have to work until the henna paintings faded off her hands. Now, I hope I got that right, but I thought that's where I heard. All right, now let's see who else we have and what they're working on. Deborah Donnell, since she's so nice to be here with us, I'm going to show her kitty cat, which is a wonderful collage, a wonderful collage art quilt. And what fun. Look at the flower. It's so interesting because you, when you first see this, you know exactly what it is. It doesn't matter that it has flowers on it. It doesn't matter that it has unusual colors. Your mind loves it and takes, takes that image and turns it into something very recognizable and a lot of fun. Let me see. Oh, here is Dolores's quilt. I love this. This is a confetti quilt. Um, look at the confetti background. And she's gone in and stitched and stitched and stitched to keep it holding down well. And I love her little Carolina Wren. What a wonderful, wonderful photo. So thank you, Miss Dolores. Now let's see, who else did Inger? Inger had been doing some, these placemats she made for her parents are great art quilts. Isn't that great? That was for her father, I do believe. She's from Norway and beautiful work. Beautiful, Miss Inger. Then she made one for her mother. And I love, 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 love this. Isn't that sweet? So art quilts, you can do so much with art quilts, can't you? All right, let's move to, if you want to see the rest of these, I will be happy to show you the rest of these this Sunday. These are the art quilts. Now, my favorite art quilter right now is Miss Jody because she is so talented, and I am in love with her Frankie. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? I mean, polka dot fabrics, all different kinds of fabrics, but yet that is a wonderful portrait. Then she made him a wife, and I can just see that actress. She got the look so perfect. I, I can see that actress right in my mind's eye. And these are the steps it took for her to do them. Very intricate. I, I'm just in awe. And she says I could do it, but I'm not sure. She is so talented. She's almost complete with this one. But oh my gosh, is this, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Just gorgeous. So I'm hoping she's going to enter it. Oops, the last one of the bride alone. I'm hoping she'll enter these in a contest because I think they're fabulous. Uh, okay, now let's see. I was thinking of entering my tiger if I could get him done into the um, next competition. And I think the deadline is like April 6th. But then I realized 
if I go to all the trouble to make this tiger with that special thread and then have it bloom and look like real fur, I think I want to save that for in-person competition so that people can get up close and see what it's really like. Okay, here is a beautiful landscape done by Miss Linda. Absolutely beautiful. The layering, the way she used the fabric, you can see the reflection in this fabric. So it, just a lot of wonderful choices. I love this seascape. I haven't been brave enough to take it off. And then here is her watercolor painting of roses. I love it, love it, love it. All right, who else has some art quilts? Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not an art quilt, but it's pretty cool. Miss Linda is a very talented crocheter, and that really looks cool. I love that. All of uh, everything that you do that's creative, we love to show on here. So send me your photos, people. All right, let me see. Is there anything else I'm thinking? Uh, no, let me keep going. I, oh, Susie Blake, yes. Susie Blake showed us. She, here are her two lakes she was working on. I hope these are her two landscapes, her mountain meadows. And I'm really hoping that she will come back and let us see how she's doing. And how did she, I think she was having a little trouble getting her lake to look like it was there. I'm hoping that our latest have kind of given her some hints on how to work on it. Because it's the hard, that's the hardest part. But if you look here at the edge of this river and where her family has a cabin, you will see that it's all of this plant growth that helps it look anchored. So that is wonderful. And we can't wait for Miss Susie to um, come back and show us what, what she's done lately. Now, is there anything else? I think that's it. All right, so, whoops, let me fix the camera. Every time I think, oh, I want a couple cameras, and then I want a better system, and then I think, you know what? I'm pretty happy with the way it is. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. And one day when I can visit with my son again, it'll be really nice because then he can um, teach me how to do some of this. All right, I think that's probably it for us tonight. And I hope you can see progress. I know we've been a little bit slow. We had to take off a week, but we're getting there. We're getting there. And what I find, sometimes I add something, it doesn't work, I take it off. That's right, that's why we glue everything down with just little dabs of glue until we're sure we like where it is. Then, once you zigzag it, you can still take it off. You can still adjust it or put something right on top of it. In fact, if you could feel the water, there's three layers at least of fabric where that little lake is because I kept messing with it until it was something I could live with. So, that's the way we like to do it here. We make it right. Oh, I was going to show you, too. Here's some pearl cotton. I, I'm excited to try. I'm going to try some couching and some bobbin work. That's A bobbin work is where you wind the fancy, thick yarns like this. and You can couch this on using your sewing machine, or you can wind it into the bobbin. And then you're doing your work kind of upside down, which is tricky. But... It's a great way to get some really unusual um, materials in through your sewing machine because you can't go through the needle on top. It's a little too thick. But if you hand wind your bobbin, you can. You just have to draw on the back so you'll know, okay, put that in this spot and because you'll be sewing from the wrong side. So, all right, guys. Oh, you got your iris. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. Oh, that would be lovely if it's very, very lightweight um, yarn, Miss Marcia, because, you know, I stay a little warm, but that would be lovely. So I'm so glad we did a giveaway because on some I have been listing all of my UFOs. I'm up to 60, and I think there's just a few more, maybe six more left because I've got to find all my landscape. Somebody asking they'd like to see my sheep landscape mountain landscape. So I'm going to have that ready Sunday to show you. So anyway, but I gave away some of my quilts because I said, you know what? If it didn't do anything for me anymore, I'm going to pass it along to somebody who will love it. And so it's nice to know that Diane 57 got hers and Diana Wright got their little package that I sent. I'm hoping Marsha gets hers anytime. And, um, and then a Two more people, so I'm hoping. So anyway, and, you know, I'll be giving away more projects that I run across. You know, because life is short. You kind of have to decide what's real. what do I really want to spend my time on? Because now that we've raised our kids, we get to decide. <laughs> and that sure feels nice. <laughs> All right, you guys. Oh, that'll be wonderful, Diane 57. Do run with it. Do whatever you want to it. Pull off stuff you don't like. Put new on you do like. Make it yours. Because that's what I wanted to do. Is I wanted these projects that just weren't my in my heart anymore. I wanted to give some they could figure out. So that's wonderful. All right, guys. It has been wonderful. You did get it. Yes, I sent you the gingerbread man and a finger pin cushion. If I remember right, I sent you a finger pin cushion. So, and that's nice. And you're doing a little handwork or sewing. You can keep your pin cushion handy. Thank you for joining me tonight. I can't believe, there's Maisie. I can't believe it's March 11th already. I've got to make a decision about my Medicare, and I'm going to have to do my taxes soon. <laughs> but all that gets in the way of my fun, let me tell you. Y'all take good, good care of yourself. And I, uh, Deborah Dun Dunnell, thank you for showing up and letting us know you're okay. And I'll cross my fingers that as you keep going, you'll feel better and better. And Nevin, it was so nice to have you here with us. We'll see you next week again. And thank you, everyone. Oh, and if you can, please get your vaccination. I can't wait. I might be getting my first one in one week. So make sure you get on that list as fast as you can. Because the sooner we get vaccinated, the sooner life can return to normal. Okay? I think y'all are the best. Thank you again for spending this evening with me. And I'll see you Sunday and next week. Bye-bye, guys. It is so good to see all of you. Take good care of yourselves.